What's going on Trollios? We are a week away from the Final Fantasy VII Remake dropping. But with that, there's always this weird hype surrounding something. And with this game, it might be just as much hope. I know for me personally, Final Fantasy VII on the PlayStation 1 is one of my top five favorite games of all time. And for many gamers, they feel the same way. But throughout the years, it's also been one of the most polarizing entries in the Final Fantasy series. So can the remake live up to the hype of what the first game set or are we all just a little too hopeful? Stick around, let's talk about Final Fantasy VII. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different. It's gonna be a little bit more straight off the cuff, straight from the heart, talking about Final Fantasy VII and one of my favorite games ever. And with that, there comes a ton of hype and for me, a ton of hope. Because when you go back and talk about nostalgic things, even the way you remember them may not be exactly what they actually were like when it happened, but your mind makes it up to be so much bigger and better than ever before that sometimes no matter what happens, no matter how good something is, the next thing, it can't live up to that hype job. And that's what makes me nervous about Final Fantasy VII, the remake. I played the demo. In short, I loved it. But I can also tell you, that it didn't give me that same feeling I had when I was playing the original. And with Final Fantasy VII, let's go back a few years. Let's go back to when it released. In 97, it was all over the place. And one of the biggest things that Square Enix or Squaresoft, I believe at the time did, was they created hype for this game. There's a reason Final Fantasy VII is one of the top selling PlayStation 1 games is because the commercials behind it, the magazine covers. I mean, just take a look at some of the advertising on the commercials here. An evil empire is sucking the life force from the planet. Destroying all that's in its path. It's up to one soldier of fortune to save the world. If he succeeds, you survive. If he fails, you can always hit the reset button. Final Fantasy VII. PlayStation. Every magazine cover that had to do with gaming had Final Fantasy VII, and in particular had Cloud Strife on the cover. It was just inevitable. If you went to a game store, if you went to a Safeway, a, a local grocery store, and there was a gaming magazine, it was going to be talking about Final Fantasy VII. As a kid, I was a Nintendo guy. I was the N64 kid. PS1 was obsolete. But I'll tell you what, when Final Fantasy VII started getting hyped, it was something I'd never even thought about. But the amount of hype and the amount of just crazy advertising made me jealous and I didn't even know what the game was about. So Final Fantasy VII had the complete power and money and the marketing behind it. And that helps, I mean, don't get me wrong. The game is fun, but the way it got set up is unlike any game that I'd really ever seen. I'd seen systems, I'd seen the Super Nintendo, I'd seen the N64 get that kind of hype, get that kind of commercial. I've seen Nintendo put a lot of money, but Final Fantasy VII, that was the first game that I really was like, okay, this is getting so much advertising. This game's got to be amazing. And it lived up. But that's what I say. But that's what a lot of gamers say. And the people that don't like Final Fantasy VII, there's many, many reasons. But for me personally, I didn't play it right when it came out because I did not have a PS1. But the day that I got a PS2, I ended up picking up Final Fantasy VII. One of the first games I played on brand new hardware was a game that had been released four or five years earlier. And when I played Final Fantasy VII, it instantly hit me and I knew why this game was so hyped and I couldn't wait to get through it. The music, the setting, the main character. And at the time, even though the graphics were a little bit lackluster when the PS2 would come out, I was able to look past all of that and experience, in my opinion, the greatest JRPG that I'd ever seen. And for many gamers, Final Fantasy VII was the first JRPG they ever played. JRPGs were kind of a niche market. It wasn't that they weren't popular in a way, but they just weren't really transcending the, 
global sales charts like other games in the 8 and 16-bit era. So if you were playing a Final Fantasy game on the Nintendo or the Super Nintendo, it was almost more D&D-like. I mean, not that it wasn't RPG-ish, it just was so much different than what Final Fantasy VII brought to the table. And many people will still say Final Fantasy IV, Final Fantasy VI are the best Final Fantasy games ever made. And hey, I'm not going to disagree with them. But for me personally, Final Fantasy VII was in Incredible. It was just one of those games where my mouth dropped on occasion, on occasion, on occasion. I just couldn't, I couldn't put into words how I felt. And even as an adult today, that's really why this game ranks in my top five games. And it's not because I can go back and play it every day, every week, every year even. I haven't played it in 15 years because I played it, I experienced it, and it left me with a feeling that very few games have ever been able to accomplish since. So. That's my background on Final Fantasy VII. But what is it about Final Fantasy VII and the remake that makes me nervous? Well, first off, it's that feeling of nostalgia. No matter what you think about a game, if they remake it and make it absolutely perfect, it's still not gonna be exactly how you imagined it. Now, for me, Resident Evil 2 was the way to make a remake. It is absolutely amazing. And I cannot wait to play further remakes in that horror genre. But for me personally, I almost like the idea of how I felt about Final Fantasy VII 20 years ago. I almost don't want to have to compare it to the new game because I don't know how this game is going to be. I don't know if this game is going to be a 10 out of 10 across every message board, every gaming site, or it's going to be a 5 out of 10. But what I do know is no matter how great or how bad the reviews are, it's going to be my own personal feelings that are going to dictate whether or not this game lives up. And for many gamers, it's almost impossible. We're going to have this group of gamers like myself who were able to play it roughly around the time it came out, back when it was fresh, back when it was new. And they're going to have this specific feeling involved that's, that's it's, it's hard to explain. It's that nostalgia. Then we're going to have a group of gamers who have grown up hearing about this legend, this Final Fantasy VII, Seth Roth. Cloud, all these characters that they grew up hearing about but never really got a chance to play because it's kind of hard to go back and play some PS1 games. I'll be the first one to admit the PS1 and N64 graphics are some of the worst to go back and play because it was the first iteration of 3D and as fun as it was, it was definitely the first. It looks a little rough. I mean, I can draw pictures that look better than the graphics on the PS1 and N64 and that's saying a lot because I'm a terrible artist. And so for the gamers that have been hearing about this legend, about this amazing creation, when they're going to play the remake, they're going to get Final Fantasy VII. They're going to get this story. But I don't know if that story is going to hit the same way that the original did. And that's what makes me nervous. That's what makes me so nervous for the hype job that Final Fantasy VII Remake is getting. Not because I don't think it can live up, not because I don't think the game is going to be great, but for me personally, is it going to give new gamers that same feeling of just... I don't even know how to explain it, but just that feeling inside when you're playing a game that you're fully invested, that everything else going on around you doesn't even exist to a point because you are so involved in the game. Games today, I don't feel like, get the same level of advertisement. And that's really roughly because the internet has ruined that for us. Not that I don't like the internet, but with the internet, companies aren't going to spend a ton of money on magazine covers, on commercials, because we're not watching TV, we're watching YouTube, we're watching Twitch, we're watching anything that's online. So you're going to get these little subtle advertisements. And with online gaming, you can go straight to IGN, straight to GameSpot, straight to all these places that have reviews and previews, and you can get all your information there. So it's really hard to visually see a hype job as it's happening in the video game industry because every website's going to be talking about the game anyway where before if you walked into a grocery store if you walked into a game store and saw posters you saw advertisements you saw 20 copies of the game on the rental stand you knew that was worth something because they wouldn't have 20 of a piece of junk game Okay, LJN wasn't getting 20 games on their shelf. They were getting one or two to rent. So when you go to an old game store and there was 20 and you could rent it, you knew that was a huge game. You knew it was going to be good. And so with the gaming today, it's just different. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But with Final Fantasy VII, the demo, the remake, I had a blast. The first thing that hit me was just this huge feeling of the music. It was music that I hadn't heard in so long that I forgot about, but it instantly felt familiar again. And that's what was really cool. And playing the game, the updated visuals were amazing. It was 
really weird hearing Cloud's voice and all the other characters because it's like reading a book in the early days. You had to create voices in your head. And so even though the voice that I created back in the day wasn't exactly what Cloud sounded like, it was amazing. I love the voice acting. I love that they changed a few things up. And I can't judge a game based on a remake demo, but I can tell you it looks to be a fantastic, well-polished game. But for me, I just don't know if it can live up to that same level of expectations. I'm gonna play it. I'm probably gonna like it. But I still think Final Fantasy VII on the PS1 is still gonna be my top five favorite game of all time, even if the remake does everything better, just because that feeling may not be able to come back. I may not have that same childlike feeling as an adult that I did back then. And for many gamers, you go, why is Final Fantasy VII popular? Well, I wanna pull up a couple things on Reddit that really explain it for a few gamer standpoints. So bear with me as I read this, and I'll get off my tangent and let you get back to the rest of your day. So what does Reddit have to say when someone asked, why is Final Fantasy VII so popular? It's a valid question. And this person wrote a fairly long one, but I'm gonna kinda talk about it. In 1987, the first Final Fantasy came out. 10 years later, Final Fantasy VII was released, and it was the first installment of the series to be done in 3D. That's no, no surprise, we knew that. Typically, Final Fantasy games featured turn-based combat in which the player chooses members of the party to make their attacks, and then they heal their fellow party members. We kinda know the turn-based battle system. And Final Fantasy VII is no exception. But between the amazing combat animations at the time, the incredible visuals and scenery, the lovable characters, rich and gorgeous soundtrack, and the deep and well-written story, Final Fantasy VII was pretty much a classic from the get-go, and one that holds well over time, especially with people who grew up with the game, like me. Kind of like what I was saying. The reason that it's so beloved is because everything I just listed, but everything that makes the game what it is. Even now, you'd be hard-pressed to find a game with a story that can live up to the epic plot of Final Fantasy VII. It's really the kind of game where you have to play it to understand it. And that makes, again, perfect sense. That's, you have to play it to understand it, but I really feel like you needed to really play it when it was fresh and new, or you need to play it with a set of eyes that don't care about visuals because it does not look the greatest. Another thing that someone says is before the 32-bit era hit, gaming was a niche kind of geek culture, which is kind of true. And RPG gaming was an even more specific subset, lending its roots to tabletops like D&D. In fact, the first few Final Fantasies mimicked D&D much closer and dungeon crawling was a favorite genre of the time. When Final Fantasy VII came out, it was accompanied by a whole slew of other things that were becoming mainstream in the West. Anime, fan fiction, cosplaying, and PvP, basically role playing. Now, the last thing, other things that made Final Fantasy VII unique at the time was their deconstructive protagonist, which had never been done before in any RPG. It is sadly forgotten now because of how everyone just automatically perceives Cloud and later on Vincent to be emo thanks to Kingdom Hearts and Advent Children. And then you have that infamous scene where, we're not going to talk about it, happens in the middle of the game and your jaw hits the floor. So, I'm on a tangent, I'm talking about Final Fantasy VII, but for me it's a matter of hope versus hype. The demo looks amazing. I had a blast playing it. I love that it's not turn-based. I love that there's no random encounters. It makes it very unique. It's a different gameplay experience, although you're playing the same game. It's like watching your favorite movie from the 20s remade, and they try to keep everything almost identical, but it's got better visuals, new actors, and a little different dialogue, but you're still watching the same movie. It's really unique to play the demo in the remake, and I'm definitely be playing it day one, but I just don't know if it's going to be able to do what this heart right here needs it to do to keep my attention and make it an all-time classic. I hope I'm wrong. I hope that this game ends up being one of the greatest games of all time and that gamers that have been talking trash about Final Fantasy VII can actually say, I get it now. Because with the new visuals, with the updated storyline and some of the kind of Japanese humor that didn't really tr cross over very well at the time, that's now kind of being redone to make it a little bit more, I guess, palatable for the Western audience, all those little things could make it just a little bit better. But I don't know, and it has we have yet to see what this game is like. But I know there's a long tangent, I know it's off the cuff, not scripted, a little more raw, but it's just my way of talking to you about Final Fantasy VII, the remake, the original, and kind of what I think when it comes to these things. The new game's beautiful, I'm gonna be playing it, I hope you guys are too. Let me know down below, do you think Final Fantasy VII can live up to the hype, and did you play the original? And if you did, what are your thoughts on it? And if you didn't, are you looking forward to this game? Keep strolling. Keep rolling. We'll see you next time.